What's good, everybody? So today we'll be converting the Epson 8550 to direct to film. So if you don't know what direct to film is, basically you'll be using this printer to be able to print on these transfer sheets and you'll be able to print on any color garment. Yes, even black. So you never need a weeding tool. And unlike sublimation, you could print on cotton and dark color garments. This is actually a hoodie that I made for my brand. And my brand is highly flavored and I'm most popularly known from TikTok where we have over 200,000 subscribers. But you can see how the colors pop. And I'ma teach you in the most easiest form of content how to do this as well so you know pay attention we're gonna have a fun time we're gonna get through all this together and i'm gonna show you how to convert this printer from start to finish if you want quality products if you want quality you know on your hoodies on your t-shirts then i will link all my products in the description and i do have an entire ebook that teaches this process as well in case you want to get started into direct to film now first let's get into opening the box so i'm gonna grab scissors and i'm going to flip my camera around so y'all can see the entire process all right so camera is flipped and we're going to open the box together and basically what we're doing is just removing all the additional packaging so we won't need this throw that to the side this throw it to the side these you won't need either now this it's important to keep this because this is where your charger will be at and this will also be where your inks will be at. So as you can see, this is the power cord for the printer and these are the inks. Now we do not use these inks. We do not use these because these are regular printer inks, but we do need these bottles because these bottles have a special top that goes into the printer. So what we're going to do is dump these bottles out into the toilet, wash them out. Another thing that you need to note before you clean everything out is make sure that you keep the tops with the bottle that it came off of. Do not mix your tops up. You wanna make sure that every bottle has its top. And like I said, just dump this ink out, wash it out, wash the top out as good as you can and come back to this video once we have completely empty bottles and we washed it out to the best of our ability. All right, cool. See you in a few. All right, so after you wash your bottles out, they should be like this. It's okay if you still got some residue here or there, but as long as they're mostly empty and they can still be wet, then that's all that matters, all right? so. First, we're going to start with our BK because BK and PB are the ones that we're going to make our whites because the way the printer is set up, the printer has BK and PB first and then it has GY at the end. So I like to have my whites next to each other. It really doesn't matter how you set the inks in the printer because you're going to tell the software, as you'll see later, how we did it. So what I'm about to do now is actually take the BK and we're going to grab our DTF ink. And like I said, I would highly recommend that you get highly flavored DTF ink. Um, but we're going to take our ink, open it up, and we're going to go ahead and start filling up our bottles before we take our printer out. So let's start with that. Throw this in the trash. Let me skip this 
back so you can see. All right, so we'll go ahead and open it up our bottle. Does have some things you gotta remove. So just go ahead and get these tops off. I'm gonna grab some scissors. Go ahead and do that. And the good thing about Holly Flavor is we have squeeze tops. So if you take that top off, once you remove the inner seal, you can just squeeze it into your bottle. And that's all we're doing. We're just squeezing it in there. And we're basically going to do this for all the inks. Remember, BK and PB are going to be your whites. And then GY is going to be your black DTF ink. So we're just squeezing it in there. And this could get a little messy, so you might be want to be in the area where you don't mind getting messy at. And after we get our ink in there, go ahead and top it. And it's okay if it still has black around the rim or anything, as long as the bottle is mostly white. And just cover it up, shake it, put the top on, shake it because we want to make sure it's well shaped before we put it in the printer all right so that's the bk let's go ahead and do our pb and i'm gonna probably cut this video short after i do the bk pb and gy so this is the pb this will be our second white bottle and then the cyan magenta and yellow those just match up so you know yellow goes with the yellow bottle magenta goes with the magenta bottle blue goes with the blue one so that one's kind of self-explanatory but i'm gonna do these three first with you and then i'm gonna cut the video short and move on to the next thing just to save y'all time Open it up the bottles. Throw our tops back on. And like I said, you'll keep these Epson bottles because every time you have to get new ink, you'll basically refill it just like this. is satisfying to watch <laughs> all right throw my top on and shake it up and it's really important that we shake the whites um, I do have videos in my ebook around maintenance because with DTF maintenance is extremely important you want to make sure that um, you shake your printer daily because you'll see it, um, but the printer doesn't have removable ink cartridges, so you have to grab it by the size and shake it, but I would highly recommend to get my ebook that will be in the description because it will also go over maintenance and things of that nature just to make sure that you're knowledgeable and that your printer, you know, stays um good and you protect your investment so we did the pb and the bk now we go to the gy and remember this will be our black so i'm 
just going to pop top off the black DTF ink. And if you already did this part, you can skip forward, of course. I don't have to tell you that. But, you know, I'm starting from the very beginning because I want to make sure I walk everybody through it in case you know if you don't know what to do at all. So we're going to squeeze it in. And I think. Uh, top stuck all right that's out there we go squeeze that in like I said if you know you're prone to make a mess, you might want to do this over the sink or something. But I'm not. And you'll probably have a little left over in your bottles, maybe just a little bit. Just keep it. Just to top it off later. All right. And like I said, this is the black. And I'm going to shake it up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I'm going to come back when my other bottles are filled. Like I said, yellow goes with yellow, magenta goes with magenta, and blue goes with blue. So that's self-explanatory. So um, after you do that, let's resume. Be right back. All right, so you should be done with filling up all your bottles. So all six of these should be now filled with DTF ink and not regular ink. So now we're gonna actually move on to the printer. I moved my printer over here because this is where it will be set up at. And I'm actually going to walk you through just removing the rollers, raising the print head, all that good stuff. So let's get into it. So first, let's remove the packaging. see it is just a ton of blue tape everywhere um just remove all the blue tape that you see it's literally gonna be everywhere just remove everything that you see you can skip ahead but like I said I want to show everything and this tray comes out so this is where your DTF paper would go your DTF paper would go back here so it would come out and lean back but remove the tape also if you look there's these blue and black little things that move side to side push it all the way out um, because you'll be using the 13 by 19 paper hopefully um, if not then a3 a4 works as well you can close it but you might as well get the biggest bang out your book and you know do gang sheets and all type of stuff with the 13 by 19 but we're just going to keep on removing all the tape they really packaged this thing well you 
these yellow things, remove these. This gray thing, you actually don't need it. You can keep it in there if you want, but I always take mine out. I don't need it. Remove tape, yellow thing, remove it. This is the output tray. You can pull it out. It is gonna have a little resistance, but that's okay. Um, pull it out. This is where your cardboard will go. So you have to cut you a piece of cardboard similar to this and stick it in here. This is where your cardboard will go. So basically this little hump right here, if I show you from the side, that little hump that happens right here is going to cause your your paper to shift and then it's going to create a smear when the print head is going back and forth. So you do want to get you a cardboard, a tile, notebook, something that's going to prevent this and it has to be sturdy. So make sure whatever you grab, it is sturdy. And I'm gonna save this to after we remove the rollers and all that good stuff. But push that back in and still got more tape here. So we're just gonna remove that. Like I said, get all the tape gone. Don't need any tape at all, perfect. All right, so first, what we're going to do is get the power cord, power it up, because we got to get this print head to where it's movable. So right now it's locked in place. So we have to get this to where it's movable because we're going to lift the print head up, and I'll show you how to do that. But let's grab our power cord. And plug this up. I twisty tied this one real good. All right, so power is in the back on this side, power is in the back. You'll see. All right. And that one down there is my regular Epson, but we're gonna be converting a new one for y'all because I wanted to walk y'all through it. So, Let's um, start by powering it on. So the power button is right here. Now what we're going to do, as soon as we see this print head move, we're going to unplug it from the back. So don't hesitate. As soon as you see this move, unplug it from the back. Now, what you're going to have to do first is probably hit English and then hit continue without setup. And then it's going to try to move. And then as soon as you see it move, unplug it from the back. All right, let's do it. So English. All right. So this is the continue without setup. So after I hit this, it's more than likely about to move. All right, so like I said, as soon as you see it move, you want to unplug it. Unplug it, even if it just moved a little bit, just unplug it. And then now, as you can see, we could freely move this back and forth. Now on this side is your motherboard. So you always want to make sure you kind of stay away from um, doing any cleanings or anything on this side. I do have additional videos in my ebook around maintenance, and I kind of walk you through how to uh, 
you know, clean the print head manually and all that good stuff in case you run into problems. First, we're gonna do the rollers before we mess with this. So keep this over there to the far. We're gonna remove this right here. So it has two black screws. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver. Just go ahead and remove it. Make sure that you keep the screws because you will need to put this back. All right, and it just removes. We're gonna set that to the side. All right, so right here, right there, there's a silver screw. After you remove the cover, that silver screw needs to go away. So let's go ahead and unscrew that. the screw and excuse my hands I uh, obviously got covered with ink but right under this that we just removed the screw out of there's the roller this is what we're going to remove so you'll see three screws if you look from left to right so this is one this is two and then this over there is three so we need to remove those three screws. So go ahead and do that. Remove. Remove. And the last one, remove that one. And you can pause this video if you need to at any point, of course. All right. So now we did that. What we're going to do is we're going to grab this right here closer to this side where my hand is and we're going to just lift up and we're going to pull out so you see how this came out now this side over here has the same type of hook and we got to remove this entire thing now this side is a little bit more harder to get out so what you're going to do is grab it with two hands I'm going to show you You're gonna grab it with two hands, one hand in the middle of the roller and one hand closer to the far right next to the print head. Both hands are on the roller, all right? And all we're gonna do is lift up just like we did and we're gonna pull that way. So we're gonna lift up and pull that way. Don't be scared and don't, Think that you're going to break anything because you're not. All you got to do is pull up and go that way. Now, there might be some resistance, but that's okay. You want to just pull up and then pull out. Like I said, there may be resistance, but that's okay. And this is kind of what it will look like. This we no longer need. So we're going to throw this away. We don't need it anymore. All right. And now that we did that, we're going to put our silver screw back over there. And then we're going to put our black cover back on. All right. So I hope you kept your screws. Y'all go in the comments and let me know uh, how easy or hard it was to pull them rollers out and what was going through your mind when you did it. I pulled out a lot of them. Uh, I've helped a lot of people locally. Um, 
This right here is me setting up somebody printer as well. So I figured that I'll just, you know, record it for YouTube. But I've done this a lot and I coached a lot of people through it. I do do uh, coaching calls as well. So if you ever have problems with your printer or maybe you just need help through this process, and you want me to go on a video call and help you um, in my description down there where the link is it will have the option for you to schedule a call and I will personally be on a video call to help you if you ever need anything down the road but there you go everything is back all right so now, the last physical part that you'll have to do is raise the print head. So right here, there's a silver screw and this black arm that's attached to it. There's little notches, as you can see. We're going to bring it to the very top line. So we're going to just loosen this just a little bit. And we're going to bring this to the very top line and we're going to do that on both sides. Now, make sure that you do not loosen it all the way because, you know, it's kind of hard to put it back in. So just loosen it just a little bit to where this arm is easy to move. And we're going to put it in the top one and then tighten it back. All right, let's do it. I said just a little bring it to the very top line it should fit in the groove and then all all you got to do is tighten it back simple and easy there you go it's in the top and it should just fit inside the groove and we're going to do that on the other side as well for the same silver screw now if you're thinking about why do we do this the reason being is because the paper is a little thicker than regular copy paper um and it has to layer an additional level of ink sometimes. Well, all the time with the white ink, it has to layer a white ink on top of it. And this will just prevent any smears from happening. Or one of the ways to prevent smears. There's a few troubleshooting steps, but this one I found prevents 90% of smears. The other 10% are various of other things, but this one helps you starting out. So once you do that and tighten it back, you're just gonna move it all the way back to this side. All right, now we're ready to cut our printer back on. So, Plug it back up. And hit your power button. All right, so now we're gonna go through the setup process and get everything set up. So we're gonna do English. We're going to continue set up without app. And in a second, it's going to ask us to fill our inks in. And we're going to do that process. And 
and it's just gonna go back and forth for a second. Don't mind it. It's just doing startup stuff. So do not mind it. It's about to give you the option to put your inks in. Now, if you already put your inks in before this, that's okay. But I'm just walking you through step by step as what the printer says do. If you already put your inks in before, this is fine. All right, so hit OK. Then it's going to say when filling ink, make sure to do not squeeze the ink bottle. It will automatically drip in. So now it's asking for BK. So BK, remember BK and PB. Those will be our whites. And GY will be our black. So all you got to do is twist the top off. Make sure you shake it one good time, and we're gonna fit it in there. And remember, the top has a special groove, so only the top four BK will fit in that bottle, which is a good thing, really, because you know we don't want you to ever make a mistake of putting the wrong color inside of on top of another color. is filling up down there and once it's filled to the top of the line up there then you can just pull it out and hit proceed to go to the next one and you're just going to continue this process until you do every single one this is the PB, which is our second white. Shake it up and put it in there. I'm going to go ahead and skip the video. Like I said, you'll just continue to proceed and do that process. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip it. Okay, so after you put your last ink in, hit next, and then it's gonna ask you to hold okay for five seconds. And it's gonna go through the initializing step. So. Basically, just hold your finger there, hit start, and it's going to take about seven minutes. So as that's doing that, um, so there's two ways that you can connect your printer to your computer, Wi-Fi and USB cable. So um, I actually prefer that you do USB, and we're going to hook this up to the back of the printer. Now, if you have to do Wi-Fi, that is okay too, but it's preferred to do USB cable just because your prints um, will respond faster. And also, in addition to that, if your Wi-Fi ever cuts out for whatever reason, then what's gonna happen is it's gonna stop you in the middle of your print. So this is just a great alternative just to make sure that that never happens to you. All right, so that's inside the printer. And like I said, while that's doing that, we're actually gonna go to the computer and do the computer stuff. So, I'm going to set you up. But we're going to go to our internet browser, and we're going to go to Google. What I want you to do first is download the Epson 8550 driver download. The very first link is where you would need to go. So when that comes up, it's going to load. And right here where it says, please choose the operating system, choose your operating system. Now, in order for this to work, 
you do need Windows 10 or 11. If you have a Mac and you're using parallel, then you can skip this part. So don't worry about the driver part. But if you have a Windows computer and you're running Windows 10 or 11 because you have a Windows computer, then you need to do this part. If you have a Mac and you have parallel and you're pretending to have Windows, then don't do this part. So after you hit that we're gonna go to this blue download over here for a driver utility combo package and install it. So hit download. And once it comes up, we're gonna do that. Hit yes. Okay, and this is important because we need to download the driver because we need our printer and scanner settings to look a certain way in order for us to do the next step that is very important for the DTF. So we're gonna hit accept and this part doesn't matter. You can just uncheck these or you can keep them checked. It doesn't really matter. Um, I don't like additional emails and stuff, so I'm just going to uncheck it. And we're gonna check the box. I filled the inks already. Hit next. It's gonna download the driver. It all depends on your internet speed and how fast your computer is and available space and things like that. Um, but, you know, it shouldn't take too long, honestly. And you can hear the printer in the background is still doing the initializing. And basically it's just running inks through the printer. So that way it could be ready to print. So we're gonna go through this. Now this part, if you're using Wi-Fi, then go ahead and go to your printer first and set up the Wi-Fi on your printer. So when it's finished, you're gonna go to to adjustment and then we're gonna hit adjust later. Do not hit that one, just hit adjust later. All right, and it's gonna take you here. This doesn't matter. We're gonna hit the home button. So some of the things that you need to do in here is first go to settings, go to printer settings, and we're gonna turn our thick paper on. All right, then you can just hit the home button. And if you were using Wi-Fi, you'll just go up there, hit Wi-Fi recommend, and start to set up and connect to your Wi-Fi. But I'm using the cable. So I'm going to hit no, and I'm going to go right here where it says connect via USB cable, since I'm using the cable. All right, so it's going to go through this. If it has a hard time reading your cable, then you'll just unplug it from the computer and plug it back. But we're going to install. And if you already did this or you're moving further along than me, just skip ahead. Like I said, I wanted to do everything step by step just to make sure that you didn't have any questions along the way and you know what to click on. Now, as that is installing, then what you could do is go ahead and get your paper together.
All right, so hopefully you have highly flavored DTF film because if you want quality like I have for my brand, then you got to make sure you're using the exact products that I'm using. So this is a hot peel transfer. So highly flavored offers instant peel hot peels. So basically the difference between a hot peel and a cold peel is, if you didn't know, basically when you press it down to the t-shirt a hot peel you have to peel immediately a cold peel you have to wait until the transfer cools down after you press it if you have quality hot peels then i will actually prefer you do this method because it actually speeds up production traditionally people prefer cold peels because if you have a cheap or a bad name brand hot peel then the design could not be settled into the shirt before you rip it off instantly. But with highly flavored, you don't have to worry about that because the design will be set directly into the shirt and you can still peel off immediately. So, but you wanna make sure you pay attention to the pack where it says print side because this is the side that needs to face us the entire time. So even if you don't have this brand, which you should, but even if you don't have it, the pack should tell you what the print side is. And you just want to make sure you pay attention to that. So we'll open it up. And remember the print side will be facing me the entire time. So I'm gonna set that off to the side. I'll open the printer and we're gonna set that in there, just like that. Now we're gonna try to print without tape. Um, you'll see in my ebook why you would have to use tape if you get paper jams. But when we get to that part, I'll let you know what to do. So now we're gonna go back to the software that was downloaded. And we're just gonna hit next. We do not need a test page. Then it's gonna ask about firmware. You can, like I say, you can leave a chat or not, I don't, you know, it doesn't matter. I just prefer not to. Setup is finished. All right, cool, perfect. So now, after that's done, you will have to go to your settings on your computer. So go to settings, go to Bluetooth and devices, and then printers and scanners. Then you're gonna click on the 8550 series. Now, if you're using Wi-Fi, then yours is gonna say 8555, excuse me, 8550 series network. That's the one that you will click on if you're using Wi-Fi. But click on it. Then we're gonna to go to printing preferences and yours should look like this. If it does not look like this, then either your driver wasn't downloaded properly or go back to the printers and scanners and see if you see another 8550 because when you go to printing preferences, you want it to look just like this. Then we're going to go to maintenance and click the picture extended settings. We're going to uncheck the first two boxes and make sure the third and fourth are checked. Then we're gonna hit okay, hit okay. Now that's all we need to do from a driver standpoint. Now we're gonna go download CAD link. So you may have the trial already installed, but like I said, I'm doing this video in case you are doing everything from scratch. So go to cadlink.com, go to products, click on digital factory. Then we're gonna go to the free trial. 
don't worry um, if you have an activation code it's going to ask for that later on in the process and I am a direct dealer for Catlink so if you do need Catlink you can just go to the link in the description and you'll be able to get it there I also have a link for the trial there as well if you need that but you'll click on the very first one and then once it's finished downloading, open it up. Hit yes. We're gonna click on the first bubble and hit next. And then we're just gonna allow that to install. Add link is where we would go to print, but we do not necessarily design in here. So the ebook will cover that. But we're English. Next, I accept, next, and we leave that as is, next, leave that as is, next, same, just keep it next, then we're going to let that install. All right, finally, so we're going to hit finish, and now... We're gonna search for digital factory. So digital factory is the name, the official name of Catlink, as you can see. And it's gonna be coming up shortly. Just minimize that. All right, so when that comes up, we're just gonna hit Okay. Now this is where you will enter your activation code or if you're doing the trial, you'll just, you know, register the trial. But here, if I gave you an activation code, it will usually start with a P. This is where you will insert that. Then of course your email name all that good stuff. So fill that out and come right back. All right, so after you register, this is gonna come up and we're gonna exit that. We're gonna hit next, next. Now we wanna go to where it says install printer and we're gonna look for the Epson 8550 DTF and make sure that it has V2. It absolutely needs to have V2 or you won't be able to set your ink order properly. So hit the V2, hit next. And this will install really fast. Next. Now for port setup, if you're using a cable, then it will say Epson Net right here. If I'm using Wi-Fi, then I'll click on TCIP network. My printer is going to pop up here. I'll click it and then I'll hit OK. But because I haven't set up my Wi-Fi, mine won't show. So I'm doing the cable, so I'm clicking that. Then we're going to hit finish. All right, so this is Catling. This is where all the magic happens and you'll be able to print your transfers. So let's first start with going to Q, manage queues. So right here, port, this should look familiar because we just did this. If you're using Wi-Fi, click here, click your printer to hit okay. But since I'm using the cable, I'm going there, hit install. You can remember this selection, hit OK, and hit Yes. That's going to do its thing. And we're going to go ahead and close it now. So it should say Remove when it has successfully downloaded. All right, now we're going to go to Q and set ink order. Remember we did 
white, white, cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. Make sure one of your whites say white too. And then hit OK. All right, Q and then properties. And I'm going to walk you through all this stuff so you don't have to worry. So right here, we're going to go to media setup. And you want to choose whatever size paper you're using. I'm using the 13 by 19, so I'm going to click here. If you're using A3, click here, A4, click there. Then we're gonna to go to Layout Manager and what we're making sure is this mirror job on import is checked, which it is. We're gonna to go to Processing Options and right here where it say under base strength, white under black, we're gonna go down to 80%. So this is a very important setting and I'm gonna explain it really quick. So basically this determines how much white is placed on the back of the image now, if you're printing predominantly black images that have a lot of black in it, then I would probably suggest to increase to 100% strong. But I like to keep mine on 80 because it still does good on black and it saves, you know, ink rather than spending 100% uh, every single time when, where it's not needed. I just keep it on 80 so if you ever see that after a print that your black still hasn't been covered by white then probably change this to a hundred percent and see if that helps change this two to four then we're going to go to printer options change normal to fast and this unidirectional to bi-directional and that's it we're going to hit okay all right, so now you'll hit this green plus sign to actually find an image on your computer that you wanna print. So I'm gonna use this one right here. Now, if you get this message right here, image resolution, they recommend that you supersize it. It means that your image isn't at 300 DPI or 300 resolution. So I'm going to show you what to do when that happens. All right. So what I'm going to do is click the image. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to where it says supersize image. You see the resolution was 277. I need it to be at least 300. So I hit that, hit OK. And then I'll hit OK again. So I'm glad that happened just in case you ever do get that message. You'll know what to do. Now over to the right, you always want to make sure your image is highlighted. All right. That's going to give you the ability to do all these different things. Over here to the right, this is telling you the size and the width of the image. Now, I want this to be a 12 by 17. So, you see I changed it to 12 inches wide and it changed to 17 inches. Now, if you keep it locked, it's going to keep the proportions. But say if I wanted this to be... Um, different then I would just unlock it and I'll change it to 17.5 and that way my width and my length don't move together all right so that's 17 cool now if your image has a lot of negative white space around it like this image is pretty good you can see the blue blocks is hugging my image now if your blue if your image doesn't have like a blue box hugging it like and it has additional white so let's say if my blue box was out here right then 
that extra white space is counting in my size and I don't want that. So I would go to crop and I would basically crop it. And let's see. Also, let's, you know, while I'm doing the lesson in CAD link, I'm going to remove this real quick. And I'm going to show you how to put multiple images on one sheet. So this is giving me that super size image prompt again. So once it loads, you know what we need to do. We need to click on it, right click, and then we'll go to super size image and change it to 300. Hit OK. And then hit OK again. Now this image is a good image, what I was just talking about. You see how that blue box isn't hugging my heart. It has all this white space. So this white space is counted in my sizing and I don't want that. So I will go to crop right here. Once I hit crop, this image is gonna come up. You're gonna grab it by the corners and you're gonna drag and get as close as you can to the image without actually touching the image. And you're gonna do that on all sides and get as close as you possibly can. And then down here at the bottom, you're gonna hit create. All right, and you see it did say 13, but now you can see the true size is a 10 by 11. Now I want a chest piece, so I'm gonna make this a four by four. And I'm gonna show you how to gang sheet and put multiple images on cat link while we're here. So once I got my size, I can scroll all the way down to duplicate right here. And it's gonna ask me how many duplications do I want? Now with a 13 by 19 or any size paper for that matter, you can only print up until the last inch and a half of the paper. So you cannot print on the last inch and a half. So I'm gonna do, we're just gonna say uh, eight for now. And then I'll just kind of see what that does. All right, so as you can see, it created eight different hearts, but they're all on different pages. So let me show you how to get them all on the same page. Find any heart, it doesn't matter which one or any picture. Go to page, automatic nesting, auto nest all content, check the box, hit yes. And all of them are going to be on the same page. Then from there, you can just click on a heart or an image and kind of move it, give yourself cutting room, all that good stuff. So you could do that. Now, what you'll do when you're ready to print is you always want to hit the center at top of page button. Now, I'm not going to hit it because I have duplications, but if I'm printing one image, then I would just hit this center at top of page button always. And then we hit this printer icon right here. And now it's going to basically activate. And because I put multiple images on one page, it's going to spool. And then once that's finished, when this says printing, you should see your printer doing something.
and this one is just taking this long because it's creating a brand new image basically since I gang sheeted it up and I wasn't supposed to put this image at the bottom of the page but this will be a good example to show you how you're not supposed to do that like I said you're not supposed to print on the last inch and a half all right, so this says printing, and now this says printing. And you can open it up while it prints. Remember to go ahead and put your cardboard inside the tray. And put your cardboard in. printing and you can see it's printing without tape now if you get a paper jam then a few different things if you go to my ebook I'll show you what you need to do to you know um, fix that but you can see it's printing where basically it does the color first and then it layers it down with a white ink on top and this is kind of the process for DTF and then as soon as it comes out you'll take it to your powder station and then start to powder it and if you want those steps go to my ebook and it'll walk you through what to do from this point forward but like I said if you get a paper jam then also go to my ebook because it will tell you what you need to do and basically what steps need to happen from this point forward. But I hope this helped and go in the comments and let me know if there's any additional videos that you need to you know, help you in your journey with the Epson 8550 clothing brand or whatever the case may be. As always, I want you to stay blessed and like my brand says, be highly flavored. Peace.